Hi, welcome to Chris Cook for YouTube. Let's get started with today's recipe. Okay, so here are the ingredients that you're going to need to make this homemade dressing. I wanted to show you for those of you who don't know how to make it, you got enough time to get your ingredients together so you can prepare this for Thanksgiving. You're going to need cooking oil, chicken broth, now, we do have chicken broth that we're going to take from the, tur from the turkey or from the chicken, you know, that we've been saving. That may not be enough, so you're still going to need this chicken broth. Salt, onion, celery seed, butter, eggs, carnation milk, garlic powder, onion powder, poultry seasoning, sage, and my all-time favorite seasoning in the world, this is Chris's Onion Soup Mix. I'm going to market this. I'm going to market my own spices. But I made this one. This one's fantastic. I think you're truly going to enjoy it. And I also made my poultry seasoning. So these two I personally made. But you're going to put them into your dressing. And for you, you just buy your poultry seasoning and use your Lipton Onion Soup Mix. You're going to need celery. Now, for a lot of you who use... Uh, bread, some type of other bread other than cornbread, like if you use some type of white bread or toast, instead of using that, switch that and use this is only a dollar ten cent in the store, so use a package of the stovetop stuffing. You can use the chicken, the turkey, or the cornbread flavor. I will repeat that chicken, turkey, or cornbread flavored stovetop stuffing only. You only need one package. Why do I advise you to use this? Because this is already pre-seasoned. You don't have to season it. And the seasonings that are inside of those three that I named, they're very good for your dressing. So you will see me just use this in my dressing. So these are the ingredients that you're going to need. So we're going to go away and we're going to put this together. Before we start, it's a three-step process that you must do. You must have your homemade chicken broth, so prepare, you'll hear me say that, prepare to cook chicken sometime within the next three weeks before the holiday arises, so you can have your homemade chicken broth, and I've already, I have a tutorial out that shows you how to do that, because you do not add water to this chicken, makes perfect, uh, makes perfect broth, but it makes fantastic Chicken, that's step number one. You're going to need your homemade chicken broth. You're going to need to saute your onions and your celery. So we're going to go away and do that, and you're going to see me do that process. You need to saute your onions, and you need to saute your celery. And you're going to need to make cornbread. Yes, I know that you have been saving cornbread in order to make your dressing, but this is a special type of cornbread that you use only when you're making your dressing and I'm going to show you that in a one two three step process so we're going to do that right now then we'll start to make the dressing for the next upcoming holiday be right back okay this is step one there's three steps that you must do in order to make a very tasty dressing and one of them is to bake chicken now it's a good idea to bake your chicken make certain that in one of your meal planning uh, preparations that you decide that you're gonna cook chicken within a two three weeks prior to you actually making the dressing that way you will have some excellent chicken broth for your dressing now you can always take your chicken broth and freeze it so you can do it up to three months prior so if that's what you choose to do just make certain that you put baked chicken on your menu planning prior to you making the dressing now when you bake your chicken the only moisture that you want to be really is with no water but if you see a little bit of water in my pan, it's simply because that water came from me having um, cleaned the chicken and then putting it inside of the pan and I did not towel, paper towel dry it. You can paper towel dry it, but that little bit of water really won't make any difference. You don't want to put water in this chicken. The only thing that you want to do is to put your seasonings on it. Now, try to stay when you're putting your seasonings, whichever one you use, it doesn't matter, but try to stay in the range of what would be tasty in your dressing. In other words, on this, I'm using some 
onion powder, garlic powder. I have some paprika on there, a little bit of season oil, and I have some salt. All of those will go into dressing. So you don't want to branch out too far when you're doing this. If you want to use some sage or some poultry seasoning, that would be fine because those seasonings go inside of your dressing. But you don't want to ray, you know, branch out and then try some um, honey, honey type uh, seasoning or you don't want to use something that you would use for grilling. You don't want to use that. So try to keep in mind if you're going to use... This particular, um, the, the, the broth that comes from this, if you're going to use it in your dressing, then make sure that you just stay with seasonings that would be conducive to what you're going to be putting it in, which is going to be your dressing. Now, once you have your chicken, you want to cover it. And you want to cover it for all of the cooking time up to the last 30 minutes. Now, why do you want to cover it? Because you want those juices that are coming from the chicken. You want them to rise up and then to go back down. All of that moisture you want to stay sealed inside of this container. So you don't want to leave it open because that's going to roast your chicken and it's not going to produce a whole lot of chicken broth. So you want to close this up. Now prior to your chicken actually being done, 30 minutes prior, you can lift this Pour your juices off, which I'm going to allow you to see me pour my juices off. Then if you want to finish roasting it with no top on it, you can go ahead and do it. But up to that 30-minute point, you want to collect all of the chicken broth that you can collect. This is going to be the best chicken broth, and it's going to produce a more tastier dressing. And the reason be is because there is no water added to this. This is coming straight from the chicken. So we're going to put this in the oven, allow this to cook. And I'll bring it back when I get ready to pour off the juices that we will be using in the dressing. Be right back. Okay, now the next thing, step number two is you want to saute up your, veg your vegetables. So I have a little butter in here. Turned a little brown, that really don't matter. Just go ahead and put in your chopped up celery and your onion. Now these are the only two vegetables that I put in my dressing. If you use green pepper... And green pepper is not too pungent of a taste, whereas it's overriding your dressing, then that's fine. But I don't use it because it tends to dominate the flavors that you want to get from your dressing. Now you want to saute these up real good. So I'm going to saute this up. And once it gets sauteed up, then it's going to go over in the dressing. So you want to cook this. Now you don't have to cook it. A lot of people don't cook it. They just go ahead and put it in their dressing without cooking it. But to me, if you do it that way, it won't be as soft of a flavor as it would going into the dressing as if you had pre-sauteed it. So you can do it the other way, but you may see traces of it inside of your dressing and you may actually bite down on a crunch of the celery and the onion and that you don't want to do. So it's better to saute this up, put it in a little bowl and get it ready. This is the day of. This can be done the day of. It can be done up to three days earlier if that's what you choose to do. But normally I do it the day of. Be right back. Okay, I finished sauteing up my vegetables which is my celery and my onion. Getting it prepared to go in my dressing and that's how it should look. Now you got a limp, translucent look. So, I'll meet you at the sink. Now, step three is making your cornbread. Now, I've already advised you that for over two months, you should be saving your cornbread. Every time you have a little bit left, you should be putting it in your freezer and saving it, stockpiling it, so you can make your dressing. You can do that up to two, three, I have done it, up to two, three months ahead of time. But the last skillet of cornbread that you make, that's the one that's strictly for dressing. So that skillet should be made really the day of because that's the day or the night prior to because that's when you're actually going to be making the dressing. These are the ingredients that I use for that particular um, skillet of cornbread. You're going to use your, I use cornmeal mix. You can use regular cornmeal if you choose, but I use cornmeal mix. To that, I add 
one box of Jiffy. Now, if you make your cornbread all the time with Jiffy, then this is not necessary. You don't need to add that. Now, why do I add the one box of Jiffy? Because I want a little bit of sweet in my dressing. I don't want it to be sweet, but I do want it to be balanced. And the best way to balance it without adding sugar to it is to add that one box of Jiffy. Now, I do have a cornbread tutorial online, so you can follow that. But this is strictly for making dressing. Now, to that, you're going to add sage. This is not for you to eat. Again, I say this is strictly for dressing. So this is like a tablespoon and a fourth of sage. To that, I'm going to add poultry seasoning. And I didn't show you the ingredients for this, but I'm telling you so you'll be able to know that top is twisted a little bit tight on that jar. So it's the same amount. I'm going to add a tablespoon and a fourth of poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning and sage is a must in any uh, dressing. Now, I'm coming out with my own seasoning line, but I've already started this, and I didn't want to let this cat out the bag yet, but it is out. And this is my all-time favorite seasoning in the world, but this is the one that I made myself, and it is fantastic. This is Lipton Onion Soup Mix. And I worked on this a little long, a little bit to perfect it. I've gotten it down pat, but I have not introduced it yet. So, but that's Lipton Onion Soup Mix. So if you buy yours from the store, go ahead and get it. Then I'm going to add some celery seed. And I'm adding like about a fourth of a uh, teaspoon of that. And I want to add some onion. Now this I know by heart because I've done it so many times and I'm adding maybe about a half of teaspoon of onion powder. Now I'm going to stir these ingredients together. Now, normally I would add some garlic uh, powder in this, but I don't have the garlic powder sitting down here, so I can't add it. So what I'll do is I'll just add it when I get ready to put the dressing together. So you'll see me add that. Now, you can add buttermilk. You can use sour milk. You can use regular milk, 2% milk. It doesn't matter. But at this point, you're going to need to add some milk. This is about a cup of milk, and this all depends on how much, how big your skillet is and how much cornbread you're actually going to make. Now, instead of using water, I am going to bring this down to, I'm going to make this liquid, but I'm going to use chicken broth, okay? Now, I've been making a dress, I've been making dressing a long time. People love my dressing, but that last cornbread that you put in there you want it to have all of the seasonings in it okay I'm gonna add a little bit of cooking oil because I do have my skillet in the oven and it's heating up with the cooking oil to this I'm going to add two eggs that's why you don't do that. I'm going to go in here and get this out. Okay, you should have busted in a bowl, and I didn't. But oh well. Okay. That's two eggs. I'm going to stir this. Now I'm going to bake this off just like I bake off my regular cornbread. In my oven, 375 degrees, it'll bake up the same way. The only thing is you have more seasonings that will be added to your dressing. And it's better to do it this way because you're going to get a much smoother taste when it comes to, um, to your dressing. Now, so I don't forget, one of the best type, one of the best ingredients to use when you're making your dressing is going to be duck grease. But if you don't have a duck, then you can go ahead and do it this way. Some more chicken broth. 
and it's just liquefying this cornbread just a little bit more. I want to come on and make this because I know a lot of people don't know how to make homemade dressing and I know that they're going to want to have that on their table. So I'm just making this so that they can have it. Now these things have to be pre-done before you can actually make good homemade dressing. This is not stuffing, this is dressing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my oil in it. I'm going to mix this up together well. Now, when I bake this off and I bring it back to add this to my dressing, most of my seasonings are already done for my dressing. It was done inside of, because cornbread is the base for all dressings, as you know. It was done inside of this, but you're going to get a well-seasoned dressing. Now the two ingredients that I must add to this is going to be the garlic powder and some salt. Pepper if you choose to. And I'm going to add a little bit more sage and poultry seasoning, but we'll talk about that once we get to the dressing portion of this. Pull this down just a little bit so I can pour it up. Alrighty. So this is ready. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in my skillet. Bake this off in my oven. Now if, if you follow the ingredients and you follow the way I'm doing it, and I'm doing this step by step so you can see every part of it, you will have some unforgettable dressing that you will never forget. So I'll bring it back when we get ready to put together the dressing. We're going to go ahead and put this in the oven, bake it off 375 degrees. Once it gets done, I'll bring it right back. Okay, this is my sage bread. This is the bread that I mixed up the cornbread and it's ready for my dressing. And if you look at it, it looks exactly the dressing color that it should look. This bread has that look. So I'm going to allow this to cool a little while. Then we're going to put it together. But this is the chicken that I'm baking. And it's hot. I just took it out of the oven. Whoa. See that steam coming up. Now what I want you to look at in here is that's the broth that's going to make the good, real, real good dressing. See that broth? Now it's time for me to go ahead and roast this chicken off. So what I'll do, crisp, crisp up the top. So what I'll do is I'll pour this broth off, get it ready for my dressing, and there is the broth that we're going to use. And then I'll go ahead and bake off the top of my, my chicken. I'm sorry, my chicken. So I'll go ahead and do this and then I'll meet you at the sink. And in the background, let me just show you this. I'm melting the rest of the butter. Remember, I used a little bit of the butter just to saute my vegetables. So I'm melting up the rest of that butter. And I did use a third of a cup of cooking oil because you want moist dressing. So I have that already melted. So as soon as this cornbread cool and I pour off this broth, we'll put together this dressing. Be right back. Okay, now we're back and I have everything in the bowl, so I just want to show you something. Okay, this is my old cornbread. This is just regular cornbread that you would actually use when you're preparing your dinner. Okay, that's that cornbread. This is the cornbread that I mixed up with all of the seasonings in it. Now it's still hot. You can still see the smoke coming from it. See the difference in the color? Okay. Now, I need you to know, a lot of people ask, well, how do you get your, your um, dressing to turn brown? Three things is going to turn your, breast, your dressing brown. One is going to be your crust from your bread, which is what you see there and you see here. Another is going to be your sage and your poultry seasoning. Those are going to turn your dressing brown, okay? 
along with whatever chicken broth it is that you had. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put just a little bit more seasonings in here because remember my old cornbread was not seasoned even though my new cornbread was. Okay. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more of my all time favorite seasoning in the world. And I'm going to post the, this I make from scratch, but I'm going to post as close as I possibly can the ingredients so you will have them. Okay. So I'm going to put about another tablespoon of that in there. These were my sauteed, remember my sauteed vegetables, which was just the celery and the onions. And I had that in a little bit of butter. I'm going to go ahead and put in, because you want moist dressing. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that butter. That butter is going to add plenty of rich flavor. And that oil is going to give you the moistness that you need in order to make a real good dressing. Nobody wants to eat any dry dressing, least of all me. Now, remember, I didn't add any garlic powder. Garlic powder always enhances flavor. So I'm going to go ahead. Not enough for you to tell it, but just enough for it to bring that flavor up. And I'll post that. And remember, I did not put any salt. So what you're actually doing is seasoning the bread. Now, in seasoning the bread, you're also seasoning the dressing because the dressing is the cornbread, okay? I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more of the celery seed. Now, the only other thing I'm going to put in this is a little bit more of the poultry seasoning, not the sage. Because when you see dressing that has a green tint to it, that's because somebody has used too much sage. And a lot of times you can go and you can see that. Now, poultry seasoning is good because you're going to have this with turkey. And the only thing it's doing is, is seasoning your dressing so it will complement your turkey. Okay? Now, I had some old... Um, this is my old chicken broth that I have been saving... So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour that in. I wanted to get some of that. I had some leftover celery on that spoon. I just wanted to get it off. So I'm going to pour all of that in. I'm going to mix this just a little bit. Now what really makes your dressing taste good and smooth like you need it to. You want it moist, but you also want it smooth. You don't want it crumbly in your mouth, okay? What tastes good then is for you to add carnation milk. And that's not enough, and I'm going to have to add just a little bit more, but I need to get it. Now, one of the things that I didn't show you is stove top stuffing. A lot of people will use white bread, they will use toast, they will use a lot of different things to go into their dressing. But the reason why I use stove top stuffing to go in mine is because instead of using white bread or toast, it's because the stove top stuff, stuffing is already seasoned. So this by this being already seasoned, this will act just like my bread. And you only want one package. Don't want a lot of it. Now, if you look down in there, you can see. See the seasonings right there? That came in that stove top stuffing? Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this chicken broth simply because I'm not going to have enough of the homemade chicken broth. So I'm adding, this is just like a half a can. This is really not a lot. Okay, that's a half a can. Now to that, because I like my own broth. This is the one that, that I made. And I want you to look at this. See that good broth down in there? But you see that little bit of fat right there that came from the chicken? That's gonna make this really good. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to add some more carnation. Don't be scared to soup it up. The reason why is because if you soup it up, it's going to be moist. If you have everything not to be soupy, and this is about a can and a half of carnation that I'll end up adding. But if you have everything to be dry, that's exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get some dry dressing. And nothing tastes worse with turkey or anything else than dry dressing. I'm going to tell you. Now this is warm, and that's the reason why you haven't seen me add. I have two other ingredients that I need to add. One is going to be the um, the two eggs, and because this is warm, I have not added the two eggs yet. And I'm gonna add a little bit more chicken broth because this is not enough. Now, if this is the way, I'm gonna allow this to sit for a couple of minutes because I want the stove top stuffing that I put in there. You're only using one package. That's about a dollar and what a dollar and ten cents or something like that, and that's just gonna take the place of that. If you use bread or you use uh, toast or whatever you might use as an additive in your bread in your dressing, that's just gonna take the place of it. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more chicken broth. And an old school cook knows how it's supposed to look. So I know what I put in here so I know I can get you there. Now this will only, this, this that I'm making, and I do have a, just to throw it out there, I do have a recipe online for if you were to do your homemade cranberry sauce. Get you some homemade cranberries and you can do it. Now, the reason why I'm wearing these gloves is because see these big lumps? That you don't want. See those big lumps? You can stir it with a mixer if you want to. But again, I'm old school, so I don't need no mixer. Use my hand. This is the two eggs. And you want to add the eggs because the eggs help it to stay firm. So you blend them up real good. And you put that in. Now, I'm going to take my hand. And I'm going to blend this. I want you to look at the color. The color is right. I know the seasoning is on point. But if I need to taste it, I will. But I can smell it. And I can tell that it's good. Okay, now I'm going to bake this in my oven, probably about 35, 40 minutes at 350 to 75 degrees, probably 375. And this is probably the last thing that you'll put in, because the first thing you'll do is make sure that you get your turkey in the oven. Make sure that you get, really give yourself four hours on the turkey. But make sure that your pies are baked off and all of that stuff. Somebody asked me about that too. When it comes to baking your pies, I always mix my mix up prior to. You can do that like a week ahead of time and leave it in the refrigerator so all the flavors can just absorb each other. And I do my greens ahead of time. I do all of that stuff ahead of time. Because you want all that stuff to be good and you don't want to rush with it. Put just a little bit more broth in there. So you knock out as much of the, your Thanksgiving Day dinner as you can prior to. 
That way you'll have a minimal amount of cooking and your food will be very flavorful. And you can spend more time with your guests. Okay. Give it just a little bit more broth. So I used about a can and a half and I must say this will feed about good 10 people. Which I normally don't. I'm only doing this for you guys because I normally don't cook dressing. We only do dressing like once a year. And I normally don't do it this close to the holiday. Because if I do, then nobody else will want it. They won't want it when the holiday get here. But I had so many other things to do until I just got a chance to put this together. And I wanted to get it up so you guys could have it. In case there's somebody out there that don't know they want homemade dressing. But they don't know how to fix it. Now, this is the look. Okay, look at that. This is the look before you put it into the oven. This is going to come out moist because we got enough oils and butter in it. It's going to come out rich in flavor because we have carnation in it. And it's going to be the right texture because we have not only the cornbread, but we have the stove top stuffing and it's going to be seasoned to perfection. I don't even have to worry about that. So I'm going to put this in a pan and I'm going to go ahead and bake it off and I'll bring you back and I'll show you what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, now the dressing is done. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the oven. And like I told you, I am only pre-baking this so that you guys can see what it looks like. And we're going to have chicken and dressing for dinner and then three weeks from now we'll have turkey and dressing so i'm just going to dish up just a little bit just to show you because it's not really dinner time but i want to show you see how moist that dressing is that is the way your dressing is supposed to look it's not supposed to be hard look at that that's the way it's supposed to look it's supposed to be smooth to the texture soft it's not supposed to be crumbly or hard. That's the right color. That's the right texture. And I know that this really tastes good. And I'm going to serve it today with just, uh, I can't eat dressing without cranberry sauce. So I got a little bit of cranberry sauce. And of course, you've seen the break baked chicken. So I just wanted to come to you and show you exactly what this looks like. So you can have this dressing on your dinner table. So that's what Chris is making for you today. She is making the homemade dressing. One more video I want to post before the holiday come that will be holiday related. And that is the giblet gravy. That will be coming up soon. And as always, thank you for watching. Chris Cook for you too. Bye.